We are such opposites, almost hostile to each other. That explains this love of mine, which is part hatred, part fear. In such a relationship, only one person can be the hammer, the other the anvil. I want to be the anvil. I can't be happy if I look down on my beloved. I want to be able to worship a woman, and I can do so only if she is cruel to me. Hi everyone, and welcome to another video. So in this video, I want to talk about a book I just finished reading yesterday, Venus in Furs by Leopold Sacher Masak. Now, L Venus in Furs tells the story of a man who wants to be dominated by women. The author of this book, just like his protagonist, shares the same tastes in sexual fantasies and as a consequence of this, an Austrian psychiatrist coined the term masochism from his name. Now, before we proceed, we first have to understand what we mean by masochism. So if your knowledge of BDSM comes from Fifty Shades of Grey, then just please no. Masochism emphasizes fantasy organized uh, around a fetish in the reversal of power relationships. So we would have, say, a man relinquish his power to be dominated by a woman. So the man here derives pleasure and sexual gratification by relinquishing his control and allowing himself to be humiliated and dominated by a woman with his consent. So the polar opposite of this would be sadism, in which the pleasure is derived from inflicting the pain or humiliation. The protagonist of the story, Severin, becomes obsessed with a woman he believes is in this image of Venus. Now, if you know your Roman mythology, you know that Venus is the goddess of love, beauty, sex and fertility. He becomes utterly devoted to her and obsessed with her and wants her to enslave him. Now, the story in essence is very simple, but it is juxtaposed with very long con conversations on the need to be dominated. So the woman of his affections, Wanda, is at first very apprehensive of his desires. But as we go on reading, we see that not only does she engage in his desires, but she is also deriving pleasure from it. So to a point where she gets her lover involved as well. Throughout the book, there are many literary references to other such similar relationships where the power dynamic is in favor of the woman. He references a lot of biblical relationships like Samson and Delilah. And there is one excerpt that I would actually like to read for you. I had breakfast in my honeysuckle gazebo and read the book of Judith and envied the grim hero Holofernes for the queenly woman who chopped his head off and for the gory beauty of his death. Now here it is abundantly clear how far Severin is willing to go to fulfill his fantasy. He talks of death as something beautiful and as sort of an ends to the means of fulfilling, giving him sexual gratification and pleasure sort of a way to fully realize his sexual fantasies. In the book, he even allows himself to become a literal slave to Wanda and even drawing up a contract of the same whereby he would follow Wanda and basically act as a servant to her. I really expected more graphic depictions of sex and erotica in this novella, but it was really surprisingly it just had really long conversations on domination and the need to feel fulfilled, the need to feel gratification, whether sexual or otherwise, by being dominated by a woman. However, there were no explicit or graphic scenes here of sex or anything erotic as such. Now, the real scandal of the novella is in the last few pages of it, whereby Severin declares that he is cured of his masochism after receiving a particularly brutal beating from one of Wanda's lovers. 
I really do believe that Sacher Masak wrote this book as a sort of outlet for his repressed sexual fantasies and maybe believing that if he does so, then he, like his protagonist, can be cured of his afflictions. But that's not how any of this works. Venus in Furs is actually modeled after Masek's own life between him and his mistress Fanny. So they began a relationship similar to the one in the book and in the same way a contract was drawn up whereby Masek was a slave to Fanny for six months. In the way Severin wanted to be humiliated and dominated in the book, in the same way Masek desired to be humiliated and dominated by Fanny, even though, speaking, he was financially more stable and he had a better standing in society than Fanny, yet he wanted her to completely dominate him on, like in all aspects of his life. Now, this fascination that Masak had with slavery may have something to do with his upbringing because he was born into nobility and as a consequence of this, he had seen many lords and ladies who had kept slaves and the way they treated their slaves. So, most probably his whole obsession with slave slavery and the need to be dominated might have something to do with his upbringing as well so like i said the story is very simple and straightforward but it's actually the conversations about domination and sexual fantasies that make this novella very interesting and make it it makes it something of a mouthpiece and maybe the first literary depiction of sadism and masochism. Now, sexual diversity as we know it today was previously labeled as sexual perversion. Now, masochism is actually labeled as clinical paraphilia. Now, what do we mean by clinical paraphilia? So basically, this is when someone's sexual desires or sexual, you know, the, um, proclivities and afflictions affect them in such a horrible and debilitating way that they can no longer function as a person in society and they may cause harm to themselves or to others. However, if masochism is practiced in a healthy environment with a person who understands what constitutes sexual gratification and pleasure in the terms that has been laid out and done fully with the consent of the parties involved, then I can't really call it a paraphernalia. So while researching this book, I looked over a lot of literature referencing sadism and masochism. Okay, funnily enough, every time I looked online for statistics regarding BDSM and people who participate in BDSM, I got two varying, very different <laughs> opinions. So when I went through scholarly journals and scholarly articles, it showed me 2 to 3% of men and women participated in BDSM on a semi-regular basis. However, if I go to more commercial you know, platforms like magazines and such, that number actually increased to up to 11 to 17 percent now why such the difference i believe it's because of people's mentality when it comes to sex so even though we're living in the 21st century when it comes to sexuality and sexual preferences and sexual fantasies people are still not that open about talking about all of this so something else I learned while actually reading this book and researching articles for this video is that BDSM is not always about sex. In most cases, it's about power. So that shift in the power dynamics. So for example, like how we see a lot of businessmen and a lot of people in high power positions and you know the stress that they go through every day making decisions most of the time life-changing decisions for their company for themselves for their families it takes a huge toll on them and a stress so that release of being able to let go of control and let someone else take the control and make those decisions for you is a release of power so that's where bdsm comes in so in most cases, they don't do it for the sex. They do it for the release of power and the relinquishing control and having someone make those decisions for them. 
throughout Venus and first also, I think there were at best four or five explicit s scenes where you know it ended in sex. However, the rest of the book had Gregor or Severin, whatever he wanted to call himself, had him doing things for his mistress, had him doing things for Wanda, just so that he could lose a bit of control. So he just wanted to be dominated by her. He enjoyed being dominated by her. I think a lot of misconceptions about BDSM does come from Fifty Shades of Grey. And I have read the book, so I know what I'm talking about. And uh, what's depicted there is not actually what a lot of ac people who actually participate in BDSM do or even talk about. Consent is number one. I mean, consent is all in all for them. They don't do anything without the consent of their partner. Even in the 1800s, when this book was written, you can see that consent is there in the book. N not once in the book did Severin try to force Wanda to do these things. He asked her, he requested her, and she actually did them of her own will. And she even began to enjoy dominating him so we see that even as early as the 1800s the concept of consent was very important in these type of relationships i also actually started a poll on instagram asking people if they were comfortable talking about sex sexuality and sexual fantasies so a whopping 96 percent of the people who voted on the poll said yes they were comfortable talking about it but what's funny is that a majority of people who looked through my poll didn't vote on it. So either it's because they felt uncomfortable talking about sex and sexuality or maybe because they don't feel like it involves them in some way. People are still very uncomfortable talking about sex. That's why there are so many mis misconceptions when it comes to BDSM. I mean, I myself also had a lot of misconceptions. It was not until I read this book and I went through all those research articles that I finally understood that BDSM is not only about sex. It was about the power dynamic and the shifting of power and being able to place yourself, to place control, to hand over yourself basically to another person in order for that person to dominate you and to make those decisions for you. Now the book has a lot of references to a lot of other books and uh, literature and it would take me maybe an hour or two at the most to be able to go through all of that with you. So I would just suggest you pick up the book and if you find any portion of the book where you feel like it could relate to something else, then go through it and read it. And the translation that we have now of Venus in First actually gives has very good footnotes and a very good introduction in the beginning. So you'll really understand what you're reading if you want to read it. Okay, I think I have been talking way too long about this. So please do pick up the book read it let me know what you thought about it whether you agree with me or disagree with me i mean discussions they help everyone so thank you everyone for watching this video and listening if you're interested please do subscribe like and share okay bye the first literally literally <laughs> literary this this